Natasha, and thank you so much for joining me today. Well, today I thought that I would try something out just to try it out, really. I saw this, and this is the Paper Accents Outdoor Stencil Card Making Kit. Now, of course, this doesn't have everything, but this goes a long way to having the things that you need for card making. It gives you a good start, nonetheless. There are some general instructions on the back in case you want to read through that. But as for the contents of the kit, you get three stencils. So one of them is an alphabet and number stencil. One of them has a camping thing. So it has some deer, some trees, tent, mountains, fire, and a little lantern. And then at the next is the wood grain stencil. The stencils are not super, super thick, but I still think that these are going to be really, really fun. Then it comes with eight color mats. These measure four by five and a quarter inches. So there's some in some sort of olivey green and then some brown, some sort of navy and then some almost eggshell or so color. Then there are also eight of these white mats. These measure three and three quarters by five inches. Then there is some envelopes. There are six envelopes that are going to fit uh, these cards perfectly. And then there are also six card bases as well. Now I will just quickly say that although these are fantastic, this here is my white card bases that I generally use. I would say uh, personally this paper is more vanilla sort of color um, but that's just neither here nor there if you're going to be using their bits and pieces uh, just not super super bright white but it looks white enough uh, anyhow now I am going to start putting a card together using this kit obviously this does not come with any ink or anything like that so I'm going to pretty much use the contents of the kit to create a card and I love how this one comes out now this is the vintage photo distress ox side ink. I'm going to be using really limited supplies for this because I didn't want to bring in a whole lot of bits and pieces. Using a domed foam blender, this is actually a brand new one so I just wanted to make sure there was plenty of ink on there. I'm going to add a base layer of the vintage photo which is just a brown ink. Um, of course this is the oxide, you could use normal distress inks, you could use any inks at all. Uh, but I'm just going to go around the edges and then a tiny little bit in the middle. I'm not aiming for perfect or even coverage at all. Uh, I'm going to be using the wood grain stencil to create a wood grain background. So this doesn't at all have to be even and perfect. It's just getting the color on there. And to hold down the stencils while I'm stenciling, I'm using some mint tape. I'm going to be using this throughout the video to hold down a couple of things while I'm doing uh, different aspects of uh, inking, I guess, or working with ink. So I'll put one at the top and one at the bottom. Now, as for this kit, there is also a bohemian one, which is gorgeous as well. And actually, uh, right now, as at the time of voiceover, the Bohemian one on scrapbook.com is on clearance. It is on clearance for half price. Um, so I will leave links to these kits down below in case you're interested in checking them out. I think it's a really fun way to sort of start off if you don't have a whole lot of supplies. Um, of course, uh, I had probably some of these that I'm able to, um, I, you know, I didn't necessarily need card bases. I don't necessarily need card uh fronts and I don't necessarily need envelopes but I think the stencils are really fun and I thought I would try the kit mainly so that you don't have to. I quite like the idea of uh, looking at videos of the kit before I purchase it to see what others to see sort of a realistic version of what's inside there um, and how I might be able to use it and some ideas of how I can put things together so hopefully this is helpful uh, the other kit the bohemian one which I might even pick up as well that has lots of gorgeous feathers and arrows and um, it has a gorgeous alphabet stencil as well uh, and I think that one would be I mean really good value at half price that's for sure so the then once I've finished the wood grain stenciling, I'm just going to go over this again with sort of my uh, domed blender without putting any more ink on there just to sort of smudge it and move it around and blend in that background. So it doesn't have to be perfect at all. 
This is all pre-cut, so I haven't had to cut anything so far. Now, I didn't really want to bring in dies to sort of make shapes, but I thought the circle dies would be okay. I know it's somewhat cheating, um, but there are no rules, and that's okay. So I am bringing in two dies to use, just circle dies. Uh, if you didn't have dies, then you could most definitely just draw around a shape, a circle, a bowl, a mug, anything like that, and cut these shapes out. But I'm going to use one of the sort of olivey, foresty green color and then one of their card fronts as well. Now, there is a reason that I'm cutting in the very center, I promise. I know that that can be frustrating when I see people cutting right in the center of a very good, perfectly used piece of paper. Um, but I will show you in just a minute. Now, let's create the focal point. So here is another of the stencils. I'm using the same vintage photo, so just the brown ink. I am using some mint tape just because these shapes come very close to the edges and I certainly don't want to ruin anything halfway through here so I'm just using a pouncing motion. I quite like this when it comes to a uh, texture. I like the texture of this for the little deer and it gives a little bit of variation um, down to his feet. I kind of swipe up so that I get a variation in the texture and just making sure I get a really crisp clean outline uh, with this image. Now, of course, you could take anything in your own stash and create this as well. I truly am just trying out this kit so that you can see the contents and get some ideas of what you could make with it as well. I just purchased it. I saw it there. I purchased it. I thought it would be fun to try out. I'm always looking for new things to try um, and to keep it fresh. So no, they didn't sponsor this. They have no idea, I'm sure, that I am creating this video. None whatsoever. Um, and I certainly just purchased it myself because I thought it was a fun kit. Now, this here is a piece of the mint tape. You saw I just cut a little squiggly sort of line. This is going to ground that deer for me. I'm using a little bit of, I think it's leftover gray ink. I didn't even ink it up. I just used a finger dobber from my uh, little set there and I'm just going to add a little bit of ground. Now, as for the trees, these again look like they're floating at the moment, but we'll fix that soon. Now, I know that it's a little bit tricky because um, what I do wish is I wish that the company included the masks, so the inside parts of the stencils that they cut out because I feel like they're cutting them out anyway, so why not leave them in? That would be very, very handy so that I could mask off some of these items but alas they didn't and so I am just going to sort of cut this little piece of um, mint tape here just to cover up the deer's uh, back or his behind so that I'm not mixing the inks because I want these trees to appear like they are behind the deer so to speak. Now you see I actually left a little gap there so I'll just move it down a tiny bit and then use a little bit more ink to get rid of that white line between the deer and the tree. So it sort of appears like they're coming out from behind him then I'm going to add one as well to the side which is probably more um, at the same level as the deer and then just to ground the trees as well I'm going to reuse that little uh, very very quick sort of um, mask I'm going to take this one off the bottom and then take the um, other side not this side I'll switch in a second <laughs> and I will also add a little bit more gray there this can just be ground snow dirt whatever you want it to be it doesn't have to be too specific and I just add a tiny amount of ink again just so it sort of grounds everything in the picture I did think that you could also do a really cute little uh, focal point with the camp, the tent, and then the campfire, uh, and then maybe some trees in behind the tent. That was my other one that I was thinking of doing, uh, just to create a little focal point, or even a whole uh, front image like they have a picture on the front of the packaging. Um, but I thought I would do something just a little bit different, just as I said, for another idea. So then I, that's what I use the um, green circle for, is it is just a layering for the white uh, focal point that I created. This is the Doodlebug Happy Birthday set, and I just want a couple of words out of here because I took inspiration from the front of the... Um, packaging and it has the word wild there uh, on the front of the packaging and they have used the alphabet stencil and I thought I would use that as well but I thought I would also use some of these words to say have a wild birthday. Now obviously this just goes with the theme of the card so and I'm going to stamp it uh, directly well stamp and stencil it directly onto my wood grain background that I created. Now as again because these letters are somewhat close together and I 
I also at this point really truly do not want to mark anything up. I do use a little bit of mint tape just to mask off some of the letters and I'm also going to start in the center of the word the I and the L and that means I can just sort of center the word a little bit better um, because for whatever reason I just can't estimate where things are going to go very well. Um, you might do better than I can and you could start at the W at the beginning but if I start in the middle letters I find I sort of end up centering them a little bit better. It doesn't have to be perfect at all. So I've got the word wild there. Of course, I did think about personalizing this card with the person's name, but for the minute, I don't know where this one is going, so I thought I would just leave it with this sentiment. So this is have a, and then wild, and then this stamp here says happy birthday, but I'm only going to ink up the birthday, and that can go down the bottom. Now, this is where everything kind of comes together. I'm going to use that green bit is a matting layer or a matting uh, cardstock layer and so that is why it doesn't matter that I have this big gorgeous hole in the middle because nobody will know that was there. Now this is my little trick when I want to get things all lined up. I put four bits of adhesive around the outside. I actually put one on the inside too, um, I'll show you in a second, but uh, what I do is I just peel back a little tab of each one, pop it out the side, you can see here, so I actually have one in the very center there, pull back a little tab of each one and then I line this up and you can see you can move this around back and forward, back and forward really, really easily um, until you get it perfectly lined up, then press the middle down to uh, get that little bit and then press and then, sorry, take out all of the four tabs and that way everything is lined up ready to go. Then I'm going to add on the focal point and that is this card done for today. So let me know what you think of this kit. Uh, I really thoroughly enjoyed this. It put me out of my comfort zone a little bit. It helped me to think creatively and I really like the outcome of the card too. So thank you so much for joining me. Of course, I will have links down below. I will also have links to the Buy Me A Coffee website in case you would like to support my channel. Other than that, I'll see you next time. Bye.